G'day everyone. Thank you for tuning in. System building time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Monday afternoon. This one we're going to build up my new Komodo Dome firewall. Um, but I'm going to preface this by saying there's going to be some of my viewers here who are going to want to rip my head off and kick it a hundred feet. Because what I'm about to do and the way I'm about to commit, configure Komodo can be best described as completely illegal. You don't do what I'm about to do. All right, I'm throwing the rule book out the window on this. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even do this in a business environment. There is no way I would do this set up in a business environment. Because if you do, you're dumb. I'm doing it here at home. You probably wouldn't even do this in a home network either. Okay, so for those that are going to yell and scream at me, don't watch this video. Okay, because it can be best described as breaking every network convention, IP table, network topology from the last 40 odd years. Okay, I'm, I'm in for rule breaking this afternoon. I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm dead set fair dinkum. I'm throwing the rule book, the conventions, the IEEE rules, the, symptom, the whole lot's getting chucked out the window with the way Komodo is going to be configured. And I wouldn't do this in a business either. Okay, I'd follow the rule books of Class C networking Class C IP tables and Class C topology. I'm going to use Class B. We'll get to that shortly. Let's kick it off with the hardware. Now, we're using one of my mate's uh, SFFs that he's given me. I believe it to be a Core i5 3.4 gig. I think it's a 3000 series Core i5, but we'll have a look at the BIOS. Uh, 320 gig Western Digital Blue, 12 gig of RAM, which is obviously not a... Normally you go 4, 8, 16. Um, I've gone 12 gig. Two Ethernet gigabit cards, one in the PCI bus, one on board, and the new Komodo Dome. Now, I've got the new Komodo Dome on an optical disc already. I've already burnt that to an optical disc. And I've already, um, I'll show you upstairs, but I've already done a little bit of work on the new server as well. Okay, so that's the hardware. Now, how am I going to configure Dome? All right, this is where you're all going to scream blue murder with me and want to rip my head off and kick it 100 feet. I'm not following standard networking practices and rules. Okay, Komodo on the red zone will just pick up DACP coming off the modem for the time being. Um, now, as I've mentioned, I haven't had a decent play around in the modem at the moment, so... I'm just leaving, I'll, I'll put the modem into bridge mode in time, but initially I'm just going to run Komodo's red off DSCP. Done. Okay, fine. The green zone, the LAN. Now, this is where I am going to have people yelling and screaming at me. In fact, I can pretty much, much name four viewers that are going to do this. The green zone on Komodo is actually going to run a Class B network 172.16.00 subnet. A net mask of 255, 255, 255, 248. Okay. The reason being is it's only going to connect, only going to connect to Zentiel. Okay. Now I know you're all screaming at me. How dare I use Class B? How dare I break all the rules of today and go back to using a topology that is ancient old? No, I know. Like I said, I'm throwing the rule books out. I'm throwing all networking conventions. All networking regulate, the whole lot's getting thrown out with this Komodo build. I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, I can probably name four viewers that will have stopped watching this video by now because of the way I'm doing this. So what's going to happen is Komodo's going to talk to Zentiel, and then Zentiel will run the network as it did, but it's going to come off the new server. Okay. Now that you're all screaming blue murder with me, <laughs> why am I doing it this way? simple because that's the way I want to do it 
Now, the new Zentil build will still run my existing LAN topology. So Class C, subnet of 192.168.100.0, standard Class C net masking. So 255, 255, 255, That way I'm not having to muck around with my access points, the hypervisor, Plex, etc. Okay. The only difference is, is between Dome on the green port, so the LAN port, and Zentil's NIC 1 are going to run in class B. And in actual fact, I'm not even using proper class B subnetting, e, uh, net masking either. I'm using um, a completely different net mask. So I'm, I'm only going to have six addresses coming off the green zone on dome, which we'll go through. So let's head upstairs and uh, build up my new dome gateway. Let's get into it. All right. So here is our new gateway. We have a PCI gigabit card. We have an onboard card. We have an ASUS motherboard. According to my mate, it's 3.4 gig. We'll get into the BIOS and have a look. We've got 12 gig of RAM. You can see there it's only the two DIMMs. Just another one of these generic cases from my mate at his computer business and an ASUS optical drive. Now, there's our Komodo dome on a Kodak DVD. So I guess what we need to do is power it up. I've got a keyboard, wireless mouse, DVI monitor. So we'll go in and check the uh, check all the BIOS settings. Make sure everything's right to go. A Zeus. Oh what? He told me it was 3.4 gig and it's a bloody Core i5-24 at 3.1 gig. Oh, damn it. Okay, so it's not a 3.4 gig Core i5. It's a 3.1 gig Core i5. Oh, that's a pain. All right, first things is we need to get into the advanced menu and have a quick sticky beak at everything. Uh, advanced SATA configuration. We are in AHCI, so that's good. There's our Western Digital 320. Hot plug is enabled. That's good. AI tweaker. Oh, we don't need any of that. Clock time and date are correct. Yes. That's all good. That's all good. That's all good as well. So that's fine. We might hit this with the air compressor before we take it out to the cabinet. <laughs> okay, so that's all good. And we've got an Zeus DVD optical on the bottom. That's fine. So that's all good and good and proper. We've got USB 3 support. And we don't need any of that. Okay, so let's get this optical drive in. Oh, geez, that's a bit violent. Ruth, well, I was going to throw the tray out there for a moment. Okay, let's set up the boot device order. Uh, yes and yes. So position four, that's correct. Hard drive position one, that is correct. You're all screaming at me because I'm doing this on an optical drive instead of an actual... Boot uh, USB, but it is what it is as far as I'm concerned. Okay, save configuration. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what, just to make sure the BIOS isn't completely fooling with me, we'll actually go here and we'll actually boot it from that. Oh, that's the optical drive. Okay. So let's go and install the new version of Komodo Dome. Hopefully it picks up the Ethernet cards. <laughs> A bit slow to start, but it always is. New Dev 87. 
Let's hope it can find the drivers for it. So I'm booting this off an optical disc. Might as well put the cover back on the top of it. Listen to this thing. Good grief, that's noisy. Alright, off it goes and starts installing everything. Wow, that's quick. Alright, so installing it off disk. Yes, I know you're all ripping me a new one because I'm installing it off an uh, optical disc rather than off a USB key, which is now the norm. But who said I do things by the norm? All right. Let me put the camera down so I can put the case cover on this properly. Hang on. All right. So case cover's on. Oh. Case fan's not running. No. I'll have to see what's going on with that. Okay. Ugh. Camera hasn't focused again. Hang on. All right. So we're off installing everything. That's quick. That's like super quick. I've got a laptop here as well for the post configuration stuff. 700 and, or 207 packages. Now the way I've got this plugged up, I think's right. Um, just while that's installing, I've got external on the PCI card and internal on the actual onboard. I think that's the way it'll do it. I've already pre-configured the laptop for dome zone settings. I'll show you those shortly. Nearly done. All right. Now, the other thing, too, that I've done this morning, which I'll just show you, this is another one of my quad fast uh, four port quad gigabit Broadcom cards, which I've now put into this server. And what that's going to do is act as the guest network for friends and family so an access point will come off that card or a couple whatever and the onboard nicks will run my network we'll get to that if we get time today all right so we're nearly done as you can see basic requires root for the root users directory That drive's going like buggery. So basically what we did was, um, as you saw there, that, that optical drive is noisy. Installing the bootloader, which is good. Post installation scripts, which is also good. <laughs> Jeez, that's noisy. That's very noisy, isn't it? Well, the next thing we've got to do is obviously install Zentiel, which I'll, I'll install Zentiel off USB. It'll be much easier. OK. 
Okay, once this is done, uh, we will, or once it says it's ready to reboot, we'll come back. All right, well, a few minutes later, and I think it's nearly finished. Actually, to be honest with you, if I am honest with you, if you've got a very big server, it's sort of a bit of a waste using it as a gateway. You're better off using something like, you know, an SFF or something like that or an old desktop. Um, not necessarily, well, it's perfect for home. I know a couple of techs around Geelong that use these and run Endian or Untangled or PF or whatever just on these. Um, so this is the... I believe the latest version of Komodo. I re-downloaded the ISO last night and uh, did it. I thought we were nearly finished. Still claims running post installation scripts. Oh, it's CentOS, isn't it? So it does take a bit of time. All right, let's see what happens in a few minutes. All right, well, a few minutes later, we're still on running post installation scripts and the hard drive's having a 60 fits at the moment so I don't know what's going on here. I really don't. All right. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so while that's doing that, I've put the uh, quad fast ethernet card in. Uh, it's gigabit. Um, now... With the Zentiel server, which is this one, what I'm going to do is, and I'll do a different video with this, is I'm just going to leave it in RAID 1 with Global Hotspare. Now, let me explain why. Number one, uh, it's already pre-configured like that anyway. Uh, number two, um, I know RAID 1's slow, but, you know, I, I really can't be bothered stuffing around to reconfigure the whole thing when it's already preset configured raid one with global hotspare so i'll leave it in its existing configuration i will install the new zentiel off it and get it all organized that way at least get dacp dns going uh, whether i use ads yet i haven't made my mind up i can always do that at a later date <sighs> Okay, well, we'll save a bit more video time, come back when, it, when and if it next moves on. Okay, this is still running post-installation scripts. Now, I don't remember the older version of this taking this long to set up when we initially set it up on the old IBM. And there's the other half. Making lunch, I assume. So, I don't know what this is doing uh, at all because I don't remember it taking this long to actually do unless the new version is got more stuff in it ah oh, there we go Uh, what's this doing now? Might bring up the laptop. <laughs> Open BSD cryptographic framework. You can see it there. Network start. Ooh, that's not good. Oh dear. That's less than ideal. Um... Hmm. 
I'll bring the laptop up. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of an issue. Synchronized bridge configuration with system. Error firing action network start. Plain file object has no attributes. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me... Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that Dome's not going to run on this. Alright, I'll come back once it moves on. Okay, well finally we're rebooting. No, we're not. We've completely powered off. Uh, okay. <laughs> that actually completely shut down then. Get the disc out of there. All right. Now what we've got to do is find out whether or not it actually likes the Ethernet cards because if it doesn't, we've got... A serious problem. Either that or I've got the Nix mapped incorrectly. But we'll find out sooner or later. If all goes to plan and this comes up quick, we'll move on and do Zentiel today too. Try and get both done in a day. All right, we are starting. That is a good thing. UTM Komodo. So we'll just wait for that to start and then we'll uh, work out which Nick has got what on it. Actually, we can do it from here. I think. No, we can't. Okay. I actually have to go in to it. All right. So now we come over to here. And I've already done the Komodo settings in the laptop anyway. So what we'll do is bring up Firefox. And it is right. We are performing TLS handshake. Okay. So there we go. All right. So I was, I did have it wired correctly, which is a good thing. So we want to add the exception. We want to get the certificate for this laptop, confirm it. All right. And there we go. So you can see here, I've got 192.168.015. All right. So we log in. With Komodo. Now, obviously, I'm going to change all that. Ah, right. So there's the LAN port. We've got to do the registry. We've got to do the uplink port. So, network. Oops interfaces and we will edit that in a moment this one's got to be edited port 2 and we need that as internet we want DACP for the moment so you can see here I've set it to internet Ethernet DACP save it now I'll do the I'll do the WAN setup later All right now this is where you are all going to yell and scream blue murder with me um, because of what I'm about to do all right so um, status down. Okay. Let's try and figure out why. Shouldn't be down. Hang on a moment. So let's change the land settings that I want to use now. 
to what I'm going to use. And this is where you're all going to yell and scream at me. See there? Now, let me go and set all this up and I'll come back. I actually changed the IP address. I've turned the DHCP server on to here. All right. Let me go back to network now. We go back to interfaces. And we edit LAN 1. We go back into 172.16. Zero, one. A completely different subnet. Two four eight. Okay, so I'm using a class B IP address. All right, so this will only send out about six addresses. Okay, and then I go save. All right, and then I actually, now this is obviously going to change. So what I now need to do is swap out everything and redo the bridge. I'll be back in a tick. All right, so you can see here, port two is up. So there's my ethernet, there's my LAN. We have a look at the network settings. Go to Y. And you can see there, 172.1602. Okay. Now, and it is connected a gigabit. So the next thing I've got to do is obviously put all my details in. You see there, that's coming off the modem, but I'm not worried about that at the moment. You can see there how much memory I've got. 11 gig of RAM, 293.2 of hard drive, 120 meg on the disk, the temp, the log, the cache, and the temp. So, uh, oh, hang on. No, that's not right. That's temporary. That's the log. That's the cache. Oh, that's, that's plenty of space there. That's plenty of space. Okay. So now you're all screaming at me because how dare I use class B. But to be honest... This is only going to connect into this, and this is going to run everything else. So I don't personally have a problem running it like this in any way, shape, or form, okay? I don't personally have a problem. And if we go to, say, my YouTube channel, that's actually fairly quick, which is nice. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. So there we go. All right, so the new Komodo's done. So there's old mate's new gateway done, which is really good. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is this thing. We'll try and get to that this afternoon. But there we go, new Komodo done. And uh, I know you're all going to scream at me the way I've done it, but this is the way I want to do it. I know I've used Class B. I know you're not supposed to use it. I know all that, but it's just easy for me to set it up in this fashion for me personally. So there we go. All done. Stick around. If I get time, we'll do uh, Zentiel today as well. Have a good one, guys. Cheers.